Okay, thank you. Welcome everyone to the regular meeting of the Town Board of the Town of Austin for October 23rd, 2018. Please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance and please remain standing. Pledge of Allegiance, flag, United States of America, and to the Republic Standing as we observed, uh, observe a moment of silence for the loss of longtime fire department member James Johansson Sr., who was with Hollahose for the guy of 50 years before retiring a few years ago, as well as Reverend Luter of Star of Bethlehem Church, pastor there for 20 plus years. Reverend Luter's wake will take place at Star, um, which is at 304 Spring Street, on Tuesday, October 30th, 2 to 6 p.m., with the funeral immediately following. We're going to start this evening with public hearings. We're going to do roll call first. Yes, we are. Thank you. Um, Councilmember Shaw? Present. Councilmember Tatori? Present. Member Feldman? Present. Councilmember Wilcher? Supervisor Levenberg? Here. Okay, yes. Okay, so we're continuing to accept public comments on these three uh, proposed local laws. We are starting with local law number four, leaf blowers. Uh, we really haven't made any substantive changes to the leaf blower draft local law since the last public hearing. After we hear comments tonight, I anticipate we will plan another work session to address where the board wants to go with this. Is there anybody here to address the board on our proposed leaf blower law? Please come on up and we have about three minutes. Hi, I'm Donna Sharrett. Um, I, um... Thank you again for considering this uh, legislation. Um, I've spoken a lot, so this is just going to recap a little bit. Um, mulch mowing eliminates the need for leaf blowers on lawns. Leaving leaves in place in gardens and wooded area benefits the plants as nature intended and eliminates the need for leaf blowers in these areas. Regarding the proposed legislation, schools and municipalities should lead by example. Owners of large properties should be held to the same standard as small property owners. We all must become hyper aware of the destructive impacts of our actions and acknowledge our daily contribu contribution to climate change and the destruction of a living planet. If we do not dramatically reduce our impacts, then we are all culpable in the theft of the future. A half hour use of a two cycle leaf blower produces the same carbon emissions as driving a truck from here to California. Sea levels are rising, storm events are becoming increasingly severe and more frequent. The use of gas-powered leaf blowers also has a human cost. The Town of Ossining's unity uh, resolution says the Town of Ossining is and always has been an inclusive community, unified around the belief that all strive for the same goals to live in happiness, peace, prosperity, and safety. Workers who operate these gas-powered leaf blowers eight hours a day, five or six days a week, are exposed to serious health risks, unsafe work, work conditions. Are we concerned for the safety for everyone in our community to include those who operate gas-powered leaf blowers? What is the price, the real price, of those manicured and often toxic lawns to the environment and to the human health? With eyes wide open and removing the exemptions of, for schools, municipalities, and large properties, this board should pass leaf blower legislation. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else here to address the board? Please say your name and address. Appreciate that. Okay, my name is Katie Melkerick Burke. I reside at 27 Liberty Street in Ossining. Thank you again for continuing public hearings on the proposed leaf blower ordinances. I come before you to respectfully ask that you pass this legislation. The legislation proposed is a thoughtful and sensible compromise. By now, you've received quite a bit of information on the harms of these types of gas machines, mainly telling us what we already knew, that they are incredibly noisy and dirty. Plainly put, they are a public health nuisance and crush neighborly relations. You have the opportunity to improve Austin as both a place to work and a place to live. Let me take a moment to remind everyone that numerous cities, towns, and villages nearby have taken similar steps and their communities did not collapse. 
I continue to see landscaping trucks and well manicured lawns. Um, most recently, Bedford has uh, decided they would um, take similar action to curb these machines. But in my opinion, the most important uh, thing you can do is that you have the ability to act on behalf of our environment. Two weeks ago, a much anticipated United Nations report on our world's climate was released. It was written by several hundred of the world's best scientists. The study found our world is warming faster than once was thought. The report stated that without considerable immediate action above and beyond what we are doing today, within 10 or so years, several hundred million lives may be at stake worldwide due to climate change. According to this report, the number one action required is to severely curb our fossil fuel use. The town of Austin can play its part, and this is a sensible and fair compromise to do just that. Please curb the use of these gas-powered machines. Thank you again for this thoughtful legislation. Thank you. Anybody else here to address the board uh, about the leaf blower legislation? Going once, going twice. Okay. Um, hello, Christy. So, in light of the fact that um, it's anticipated that this board will hold a work session to discuss all the comments you've been receiving recently, um, I would recommend that you leave the public hearing open and adjourn it. Um, you do have an extra week in there um, because it'll be a fifth Tuesday next week. So, then you're, I guess, you're looking at holding a work session on the sixth potentially. And so then if you wanted to, you the seventh, uh, oh, right, because the meeting got changed. So then potentially um, adjourning the public hearing to be continued on Tuesday, November 13th. Okay. Do I have a motion to adjourn the public hearing on leaf blower law to November 13th? So moved. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. And just a reminder, the reason is we have a fifth Tuesday coming up. And the following week is uh, election day on Tuesday, so we have our meeting postponed to Wednesday, November 7th. Next up, we have a public hearing on proposed local law number five, accessory apartments. We had left this public hearing open so we would have time to make sure we complied with all the notice requirements in general municipal law. The county provided comments to the town um, and in those comments, they were suggesting that accessory apartments not be a special permit use, um, but it has been such for 20 years or more in the town. And uh, the reason that they were suggesting that, that is because they thought that it would be onerous to have to uh, apply for a special permit. We have not found that that is the case in the past. Uh, for the most part, it seems to be a pretty streamlined process. And the board is um, at this point opting to keep it that way. We believe the public continues to be in favor of having such oversight over these accessory apartments um, when where they're located. So pending lots of comments tonight, which I don't anticipate, uh, we're probably gonna close this public hearing tonight. Is there anybody here to address the board on accessory apartments? Anybody at all? Anybody? Going once, going twice, and? I think you're in a position to close the public <laughs> hearing um, and we will have to um, draft some a secret determination for the board's review and consideration as well as a resolution that will address all the legal issues. Okay. Do I have a motion to close the public hearing on local law number five, accessory apartments? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, so we are going to close it and follow up with all of the necessary legal requirements. We're in good hands. And third, for this evening, we are uh, reviewing, once again, I have a public hearing open for local law number six, um, solar energy. We had made some substantive changes to the draft local law on solar energy before our last public hearing, particularly making tier three solar farm siting a floating zone with criteria established to determine where a floating zone would best be located, favoring paved cleared land, then open cleared land over undeveloped uncleared parcels. We are interested in hearing public feedback on these changes this evening. We also 
uh, plan to reduce the height from a maximum of 20 feet to a maximum of 15 feet, which will be in the next version that we post um, based on some feedback from our town board. Is there anybody here to address the board on the solar energy proposed local law? Donna Sharrett. Um, so I wanted to address a few issues. One is um, 231 uh, 3D5, which is on page six. Um, it states that uh, with tier two and tier three solar energy um, for the screening, the proposed screening shall not, however, interfere with the normal operation of solar collectors. So I'm just confused because if you're putting a screening, but you're not going to have materials that are higher than the solar panels, I don't see how that's going to screen unless I'm just not understanding that correctly. Um, then on the next item on that page, um, which is D6, uh, which states that they're the building um, the impervious surface coverage and building coverage should be 35% in all the zoning districts um, that tier three solar systems are permitted. I object to this increase um, based on just a request from a developer. It's a 75% increase in, in that um, kind of usage in, in uh, 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 impervious surface coverage and build, building coverage in a residential zone, which was norm, um, which is for other developers 20%. Um, so that's a 75% increase. Um, in addition to that, um, subdivisions of residentially zoned properties, which the 9094 Summer Towns Road property would be, which is one property that's being considered. Um, so they would be limited to 20% building density. In addition to that, they would be um, they would have to follow the restrictions in Code 176-18F1, which is subdivision of land and lot size. And that requirement, which was developed because there was a proposal um, that was coming into town um, in an area that had a large wetland and steep slopes, and this law was changed to protect the environment. And this, this law states that a conventional subdivision layout um, in that, you, you can at least 75% of the minimum lot area requirement of the proposed lot shall consist of neither wetland nor extreme slope. So that property on Summerstown Road is really sloped. So I think all development, if it's solar farm or, or housing development, should be held to the same standard to protect the environment. So you should have, um, first, I don't think it should be 35%, but in addition to that, it should make sure that 75% of the minimum lot area um, which would be for that R40 area, um, it would mean that at least a 30,000 square foot area of 40,000 square foot would have neither wetland nor extreme um, steep slope. It should be definitely the same standard. There shouldn't have some developers doing one thing um, and impacting the environment and others doing something else. Um, in table one, um, I think that the minimum required area should be four acres for tier three. And if I'm understanding you correctly, I was going to comment on the 15 foot, which I think you're changing that to that, which is great from 20. Um, I also think that a landscape maintenance agreement, uh, which is similar to that that was uh, done for artists senior living should be required in the code. So that when someone does a screening, that it doesn't die in three years, um, and then and there's no screening. So um, the landscape maintenance agreement is a pretty common thing. Um, that I had spoken to Westchester Land Trust about that. I think it's a good, um, it's a common, common thing to have. Uh, and in conclusion, uh, we live in an overbuilt environment with so many treeless places uh, that would be excellent for solar installation. Please do not adopt code written solely for a project that proposes to destroy nine undulating, steeply sloped wooded acres. Thank you. Anybody here? Yes, OK. I mean, I, I thank you. I, I was thinking the same thing. Um, we're, we're not, just to be clear, this code isn't written for any particular developer. Um, just like many municipalities, um, there are developments that have come before us or been presented as p potentials um, to the town, and as well as people looking to put solar on their, on their roofs or, or have stand um, standalone uh, tier two um, you know, I can't remember the term. Accessory structures. Not, not accessory yes. structures, it's just 
great standalone um, ground mounted, thanks, that's what I was looking for, ground mounted solar panels. And it's actually something that our uh, building inspector had brought to our attention that um, he thought we should address to make it clearer um, for all potential solar development, um, what the what the town wanted for its um, regulations. And to do that, we undertook looking at all types of solar, including um, ground mounted, roof mounted, as well as larger solar farm installations. Is there anybody else here to address the board? Nope. And, and is there anybody else here to address the board? Is there's another person here to address the board? We have taken comments from everybody and we've incorporated comments from everybody as we always do. Some of them come from developers, some of them come from homeowners, some of them come from local retail businesses, some of them come from planners. So we, we aren't taking one particular set of um, requests. We're taking everybody's requests. Just like we listen to all of your requests, Donna, we listen to everybody's requests and we incorporate them based on what we think makes sense. And that's what we've done to date. Uh, hi, how's it going? Uh, my name is Travis Scott. I'm representing the CVE Group, uh, one of the developers that is trying to uh, work with you guys on the solar law. Uh, I don't want to. Again, just to be real clear, yeah. we're not working with you. Yeah. We haven't worked with anybody except listened and taken feedback in our public hearing structure um, on our solar code. Just to be real clear, I don't want anybody to think we're sitting down having private conversations with you because that's not the case. No. Okay. No, most other, it most Thank certainly you. isn't the case. Um, but anyways, just a couple of the things uh, that I wanted to address. One, uh, involving, uh, you know, slope and wetlands and stuff. We're working with, an, at all solar developers are working with environmental and engineering firms. Uh, in our case, it is a New York firm that is very familiar doing development projects, of many types, both solar, residential, uh, you know, working with the DEC, working with the Army Corps of Engineers. So. Uh, one, we're not trying to do anything that isn't normal for any sort of development, and uh, neither do I think uh, the DC Army Corps of Engineers would allow anyone to really do uh, anything uh, that isn't uh, to code with any of these different groups. Um, also, regarding the uh, regarding the the tree issue, removing the trees, we we always try to cite these uh, farms on parcels that either are completely clear, asphalt, we do a lot of carports, but sometimes we do need to, uh, sometimes the only available space is our parcels that have trees on them. Um, in those cases, we do everything we can to mitigate uh, the trees that are removed, and luckily here, you, it seems you guys actually have uh, this new tree ordinance and this tree bank that give us the opportunity to easily, um, you know, try to give back whatever we take away in terms of the trees. Um, and then finally, just with the coverage, uh, that wasn't a random uh, number. I mean, obviously, I was the person who was made that request or who made that comment. Um, that was a number that was given to me that uh, had been used in various other towns who were adopting solar ground mounts. So uh, I just wanted to say, just wanted to respond to a couple of those comments that were made. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anybody else here to address the board on solar energy code? One once, one twice. Board have any comments at all that they wanted to make? Um, is David gonna, did you get the feedback from David about the height? Yes, that, okay. that was from David. I hadn't seen the it. 15. Okay, no, yes. I understand that, yes, that, that but was, I haven't seen was, his. Email, letter, Yes, whatever. yes, he sent an email to everybody this week. Okay. Okay. So with that, um, we are going to probably want to have another work session to uh, just make sure that we have addressed all the comments um, that we've received. And if there's anything that we want to tweak on this, that we do so. Um, and also because there's going to be that um, change uh, from 20 feet to 15 feet, which we'd like to post and um, continue to have feedback I think we'll um, take a motion to um, keep this public hearing open 
and the next time we will have opportunity to hear from people will be at the November 13th meeting. Do I have a motion? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We'll set a time for our work session potentially November. Did we just say November 7th for a work session? Okay. All right. Fantastic. Thank you. And thank you, everybody, for your continued feedback. We really do listen to all of it. Don't share it. All of it. Okay. Uh, have a good night. Um, all right. So that's all for our public hearings. Um, this past week has been a challenging one as uh, computer issues have plagued both the town and the village government. We're continuing to work through this. And um, good news is that it's always an opportunity in these challenges to improve our backup systems, which we are going to be working with the village to do. We do apologize to anyone who may have had trouble getting serviced by our personnel due to these challenges uh, this past week and even continuing into this week. We are hearing some talk of bad weather coming our way this weekend. Um, they're predicting something that they've referred to one or two times I've heard, a nor'easter, um, but we're not 100% sure, but we are receiving some information from the county, which is where we get a lot of the weather predictions from, um, and all of our departments will be doing their best to prepare for this. Meanwhile, we're particularly concerned with the impact on our big event planned for this weekend, the Haunted Hayride. Since we know the weather and timing can be fickle, our plan right now is to hold steady on Friday because we believe the worst weather is supposed to hit Saturday and make a decision midday Thursday um, if, in fact, we will need to postpone Saturday's hayride to the following week, most likely to the following Friday night. Um, but stay tuned because if, in fact, the weather is predicted to be bad Friday night, we will probably have to postpone both nights to the following week. We will post everything on the town's website. We'll send out e-blasts. We'll ask the village to do the same. We'll ask our police friends to do the same. And any other social media we have um, access to, we'll share this information out um, as well as in the press. Yesterday was our deadline to respond to phase one of Project For Forward, which was a survey that we asked um, people to take to um, take the temperature of our residents about streamlining government services. We have received a nice response to date, but are hopeful to get a few more. So we are going to extend the, our deadline uh, to receive the surveys back to next Tuesday, October 30th. Following that, we anticipate receiving a report from our consultant about next steps, which would include additional public engagement. October 30th is also the deadline for mailing in your application for an absentee ballot for the November 6th election. You have until Monday, November 5th to apply in person at the Westchester County Board of Elections on Coropus Street in White Plains. There are several local races to learn about in addition to congressional, gubernatorial, and attorney general races before you get out to vote on Tuesday, November 6th. The Austin Public Library is hosting a candidates forum in the Budars Theater beginning at 7 p.m. this Thursday, October 25th. Come out to hear from the sitting and hopeful candidates and learn more about their platforms. Thank you to Greater Austin Chamber of Commerce and this year the League of Women Voters for organizing this informative session and the League of Women Voters will be moderating, which is excellent. As I mentioned, aside from the upcoming elections, the event figuring most prominently in our minds is the Forest O' Fears Haunted Hayride, scheduled for this Friday, October 26th and Saturday, October 27th. Tickets are still available at forestofears.org. While tickets will be sold on site, purchasing them in advance allows you to get the discounted rate while also letting you secure your choice of ride time. First ride is at 6.45 p.m., last one's at 10 p.m. I did a walkthrough of the event this morning, and let me be the first to tell you, it's super sp spooky, and you're going to love it. However, if the super spooky isn't for you, no judgment, you can purchase a field access only ticket when you get to the gate. The Halloween Village will be filled with games, vendors, food, and music, not to mention the homespun merry-go-round and a fire show. Make sure to join in the fun at Cedar Lane Park this weekend. And that's forestofears.org in case you didn't get it the first time. For all of those watching, our meeting live tomorrow, Wednesday, October 24th, Good Choice Kitchen on Main Street will be hosting a very special event for World Acupuncture and Medicine Day. Between 10.30, I bet you guys didn't know that it was World Acupuncture and Medicine Day. Now you do. 
between 10.30 a.m. and 12.30 p.m., stop in and see Leah Schwartz of Lifted Heart Acupuncture. We'll answer all of your questions and give you some valuable information on how acupuncture can help you live a happier, calmer, healthier life. And when you're done, you'll be in a perfect spot to enjoy a delicious, fresh, local lunch. It's a win-win. And yes, I have had acupuncture, and it does work. It's very effective. For me, at least it was. The Village of Briarcliff Manor will be holding their ragamuffin parade that morning. Um, I'm sorry, I'm back to October 27th now. Um, and that's when the ragamuffin par parade will be on Saturday, co-sponsored by the Bri Briarcliff Manor Fire Department. This march kicks off outside the Operating Engineers Building on Pleasantville Road at 9.30 a.m. After you march, stay for goodie bags and a magic show starting at 10 a.m. Costumes are not your thing. That's okay. The Austin Public Library will hold an adult pumpkin painting workshop at 12 noon, also on Saturday the 27th. Kids can come too, but pre-registration is required for everyone. Call James Trapasso at the Austin Public Library, 941-2416, extension 327, or email him at jtrapasso, that's T-R-A-P-A-S-S-O, at W-L-S as in Sam, mail.org to sign up for this free activity. On Sunday, October 28th, T-Town has an excellent program scheduled for the animal lovers in our midst. Maddie, not me. Oh, sorry, I used your name. On Sunday, October 28th, head on over for Animals Nobody Likes, a program where you will get to know some of our local animals who get a bad rap, but are an important and exciting part of our ecosystem. You will even get to reach out and touch some of these misunderstood creatures. I am sure you will change your mind about how you feel about them. Make sure to pre-register for this one at ttown.org. I know you love me. Okay. Next Tuesday, October 30th, is a fifth Tuesday. The town board will not be meeting at our usual time, although we may need to make a morning meeting in order to pay bills. Again, something that challenged us because of our computer uh, woes. Lucky you, the Briarcliff Manor will be hosting the Halloween Bash that evening in support of Galata House. Come for live music, a buffet, a cash bar, and a costume Fun starts at 6.30 p.m. and goes till 10 p.m. For tickets, visit HalloweenBashBriarcliffManor.Eventbrite.com. On Saturday, November 3rd, the Austin Public Library will be hosting Mad for the Library, a 60s-themed fundraiser in the Blue Dars Theater, starting at 7 p.m. Make sure to dress for the occasion, wear your best 60s attire, and what is that? Elba? I don't remember. Tie-dyed. <laughs> I died. I don't know. <laughs> I'm looking at all the young people. They're like, I don't know. All right. Uh, yeah. I mean, I was young. But anyway. And enjoy <laughs> um, wine, snacks. Oh, I think there's something polyester. Yes, definitely polyester was a good thing to be wearing. Enjoy wine, snacks, dancing, and a silent auction, all while listening to live music courtesy of the Mike Risco Band. Proceeds will go to fund a world music concert series at the library. Visit AustinLibrary.org for more information and to get your tickets. Another great event coming up is the Austin Rotary Club's Byington Memorial Scholarship Fundraiser. Every year on the eve of Election Day, uh, the Rotary has this wonderful event. Monday, November 5th, proceeds from the event help the Rotary support local students with scholarships towards their education. We also get to celebrate the employee of the season from each of the municipalities and service organizations represented by the Rotary. Tickets can be purchased ahead of time or at the door. Email grc as in cat 10562 at yahoo.com. That's George Camp to secure your seat for this great annual community event. And yes, the town has nominated an employee. Fingers crossed. Tickets are still available for the Sing Sing Swing. Up the River Cruise, leaving from Yonkers to benefit the Sing Sing Prison Museum. This year's event's on Sunday, November 18th, and I can hardly wait, and that's true because it was so fantastic two years ago. Vince Giordano and the Nighthawks will be back, um, and they'll get you and your feet moving around on that wonderful uh, boat sponsored by Hornblower. Um, Hornblower actually donates the boat to this, to this event, so it's really fantastic. I hope you'll join me for a night of dancing on the Hudson, Proceeds going to a very important local effort, and we heard recently that there's going to be a special um, young jazz singer who's um, getting kind of up and coming in the world. I don't remember her name, but check it out on the website, which is, do we know what the ticket, the, how to get tickets? Sing Swing? Look on Facebook under Sing Sing Swing, and you'll find it. Finally, I wanted to give everyone an update on the 2019 budget. 
We're one week away from submitting the supervisor's budget, and from here, everything is looking pretty good for us to remain within the tax cap yet again. It is, however, a tedious process with a lot of small details to work out. I am extremely grateful for the excellent work and leadership of both Deputy Comptroller Dale Ferreira and Budget Director Maddie Zahach to get us through this lovely um, season every year, especially while we have had multiple computer hurdles to overcome and we're still overcoming them. I haven't mentioned that a few times. We're going to take every last minute this year to make sure we get it all right. Some upcoming dates of interest. Wednesday, October 31st, the supervisors or tentative budget will be available on the Town of Austin website and also in hard copy in the office of the town clerk and at the Austin Public Library. We will be presenting the budget on Tuesday, November 20th as part of our weekly board meeting and the public hearing will be held at the courthouse right here on Tuesday, November 27th at 7.30 p.m. In the meanwhile, the town board will be taking time to review submit the submittals, meet with department heads, and make revisions. Those meetings will be open to the public. If you do care to join us, you'll be on the third floor of 16 Croton Avenue on Friday, November 9th, starting at 12 noon and ending around 5 p.m. And Wednesday, November 14th, starting at 9.30 a.m. and ending around 1.30 p.m. You can also email us at tc at townofosity.com or call my office at 914-762-6001 and we will try our best to answer your inquiries. And with that, I ask my board colleagues if they have any additional announcements. Did you mention the Halloween? I did not. Uh, did I not? Why did I not mention Halloween? I thought I had it in here. I must have. Didn't I mention it? Where, where, where? The Ragnarok Parade? What happened to Halloween? Oh, yeah. Yeah, here we go. Um, Greater Austin Chamber of Commerce Uptown Alliance will hold, hold the third annual Austin Halloween Kids and Pet Parade on Upper Croton Avenue. The parade kicks off at 11 a.m. I think I did say that. Outside the Elks Lodge at 118 Croton Avenue and heads up to Mike Crisco Music School at 44 Croton Avenue. After the parade, the fun doesn't stop. Stay for music, games, and prizes. I can't wait to see all the great costumers out there their kids and canines alike. And yes, there will also be Trunk or Treat from 6 to 8 p.m. on Halloween night. Um, Main Street will be closed. Do we remember, Maddie, what um, Chief said? 6 to 8 from the Triangle to Spring Street. Um, there will be lots of wonderful businesses there uh, giving out candy. I think there maybe is a costume contest, so come one, come all, and wear your best and be prepared for an awful lot of candy in one place. Okay. Anything else? And hearing none, are there any liaison reports? Uh, yes. Um, yeah. I went to the Barclays Manor Fire Department inspection, and the trucks and firefighters look amazing. Oh, the apparatus is great. Yeah. Fire <laughs> men and women and ambulance. Uh -huh. um, all looked amazing, and it was great to be there. So I want to thank them for all the service and protection they give us. Um, they cover half of our area, so it was We did actually have a Mid-Hudson Ambulance District meeting uh, last week, which uh, at which point we um, came up with a plan to adopt uh, the recommended budget that OVAC has put forth for the portion of um, their budget that gets covered by the municipalities, um, which is uh, within also within two percent increase. Okay. I have it right in front of you. Yes, Mind thank me. you. And you said ambulance. The word. Okay, I did. Um, uh, any other liaison reports? Hearing none. We have no departmental reports this evening, um, so we can move right into board resolutions. Okay. Um, first, we have North State Road MOGO Trail Plan Design. Resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Austin authorizes the supervisor to sign a proposal from Sam Schwartz Engineers of New York, New York, in the amount of $65,000 for engineering and design services for the North State Road bike lane and Millwood Austin Go Trail Plan, pending review of Council to the Town as to form, and be it further resolved that these professional services will be paid for by, a grant, by grant funding from the Hudson River Valley Greenway and the New York State Energy Research and Development Authority. I have a motion. So moved. Second. So we had received uh, two grants to develop bike lanes in Austin, one of which, the Hudson Valley Greenway grant, requires that we make significant progress on it by year's end. MOGO, or the Mowood Austin Task Force, had identified North State Road as 
some of the low hanging fruit um, in our interest to connect the village of Austin to the North County Trailway in Millwood, town of Newcastle, for bicycles and pedestrians. We have identified one of the premier bicycle lane firms in the area, planning firms, to work with us with design and engineering and public engagement. Sam Schwartz, Engineers of New York City. And we're excited to be working with them on this grant funded project. And the total grant funding, as, as was mentioned in the resolution, is coming from both the Greenway and NYSERDA. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, termination, Town Court. Resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Austin officially terminates the employment of part-time court attendant Corey Dawkins, effective September 28, 2018. We have a motion. So moved. Second. With regret, we ask to approve the termination of part-time court attendant Corey Dawkins. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, Peckham Road Corporation, Road Reclamation, Hawks Avenue. Resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Austin hereby accepts a proposal from Peckham Road Corporation dated October 4th, 2018 for the full depth reclamation of a section of Hawks Avenue in the Town of Austin, written to include milling, prep work, cutting joints, shimming, and cutting around driveways and catch basins at a price not to exceed $34,200. And be it further resolved that the Town Board acknowledges that this price has been quoted as per the Columbia County Pavement Reclamation bid, which the town controller finds to be in compliance with the town of Austin procurement, procurement regulations. Do I have a motion? So moved. So as we discussed at our special meeting, I'm going to talk about the next two resolutions. Um, uh, last week when we opened this capital project to repave Hawks Avenue, we are asking for approval for a two-part process. Peckham will be responsible for reclamation and utilizing the millings to repave the road um, with a binder, and Rinaldi will do the final paving coat of a large section of Hawks Avenue. Um, from just past 9A and the um, project that's in, still in the works there to the end of the town line on Hawks. The price for reclamation was quoted per a bid, um, a county, a Columbia County bid or process, and then Rinaldi is the annual um, paving bidder for 2018 for the village that we also um, jump on to. So we're scheduled to pave, this is the important part that you all want to hear, November 13th and 14th and complete the project on the 15th, or I'm sorry, we're scheduled to do the millings and the reclamation on the 13th and 14th and a final paving coat on the 15th. And the good news is that by doing this process, we stand to save quite a good deal of money than if we were just to pave uh, the entire thing uh, new. Questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Um, Louis Rinaldi, Inc., Road Paving, Hawks Avenue. Resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Austin hereby accepts a proposal from um, from the Town of Austin annual paving bidder, Louis Rinaldi, Inc., dated October 1st, 2018, for the repaving of a section of Hawks Avenue in the Town of Austin at a price not to exceed $95,000. I have a motion. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Contract Flaming Barrel of Monkeys Entertainment. Resolve that the Town Board of the Town of Austin hereby authorizes the supervisor to sign an agreement with Sean R. Magui, uh, DBA, uh, Flaming Barrel of Monkeys Entertainment, for performing as outlined in the agreement for the 2018 Forest of Fears Haunted Hayride, taking place on Friday, October 26, 2018, and Saturday, October 27, 2018. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Um, is that a discussion? We can move the dates. Okay, I'm sorry. Are the dates incorrect? No, but well, if, if, if it rains, oh it, yes, we will we will move the dates. We will so um, incorporate a, a rain date or some or something into the into this it was contract. It contemplated in the contract that if the date had to be changed, that they would we would work with them. And what was the cost? Okay, and the good news is we have raised quite a bit of. Um, private funds to um, sponsor this event, um, which is great because of the varying and wonderful um, pieces that we need to make this a wonderful um, and an entertaining experience for all those who come to visit. I have to say, it really impressed me. It's so much different this year. It is. They really housed, you know, it, 
Well worth it. Anyway. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Um, agreement completion of a GASB 75 report, um, FYE 2018-2019, resolve that the Town Board of the Town of Ossining hereby authorizes the supervisor to enter into agreement with USI Consulting Group, 95 Glastonbury Boulevard, Suite 102, Glastonbury, Connecticut, for the provision of a GASB 75 valuation report for fiscal years 2018 and 2019 at a price contained within the proposal dated March 2018, subject to approval by Council to the Town as to form. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. So every three years, we are required to provide an analysis for New York State of our post-employment benefit exposure, um, which are also known as GASB uh, requirements. And I forget what GASB stands for, but that's basically what, what it means. Uh, USI Consulting has been doing this for the town and village of Austin for many years, um, forming the GASB 75 valuation report for fiscal years 2018 and 2019. And we are hoping that they will do so again. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, request for bids, delivery of meals and supplies for nutrition program. Resolve that the Town Board of the Town of Austin hereby authorizes the Town Clerk to advertise a request for bids for the delivery of meals and supplies for the nutrition program located in the Austin Community Center. Bids shall be submitted no later than 10 a.m. on Monday, November 19th to the Office of the Town Clerk. Do I have a motion? So moved. So our senior nutrition program is looking for a competitive provider of meals of healthy and tasty meals um, that they offer daily as part of the nutrition program, um, which is why we're issuing this request for bids. Um, and as all of you do know, the nutrition program is located at the Austin Community Center at 95 Broadway, and we also do deliver meals um, to those who are homebound and qualify. As was stated in the resolution, the bids are due by 10 a.m. on Monday, November 19th to the Office of the Town Clerk. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? A okay. contract dual wave entertainment. Resolve that the Town Board of the Town of Austin hereby authorizes a supervisor to sign an agreement with Jeff Staples, DBA, dual wave entertainment, for performing as outlined in the agreement for the 2018 Forest of Fears Haunted Hayride, taking place on Friday, October 26, 2018, and Saturday, October 27, 2018. Do I have a motion? Second. So once again, we are excited to have the phenomenal Jeff Staples involved in the lighting and also the sound uh, for the Forest of Fears Haunted Hayride. Jeff's lighting, um, in addition to all the many, many volunteer hours that have gone into converting Cedar Lane Park into a very spooky place, makes all of that hard work really come to life at night and is um, critically necessary to making this event a success. Do I have a motion? I had the motion. All those in favor, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, no, I was just going to oh. say, obviously, the same eight yes. switches. Yes. Okay. It was the same contract template. Okay. So everybody said they were in favor? All those in yes. favor? Aye. Yes. Okay. Yes. Sorry about that. No, that's okay. No problem. Okay, Aye. resolution approving EIC municipal agreement addendum, pay when received, PACE product. Whereas the Town Board previously adopted Chapter 178 of the Town Code entitled Sustainable Energy Loan Program. As authorized by Article 5-L of the New York State General Municipal Law to establish a sustainable energy loan program using federal grant assistance, federal credit support, or money from the State of New York or any state authority to make loans to the owners of real property located within the municipality to finance the installation of renewable energy systems and energy efficient improvements, related energy audits and renewable energy system feasibility studies, and the verification of the installation of such systems and improvements program, and whereas the Town Board previously authorized the Town to enter into agreements and subsequent amendments with the Energy Improvement Corporation, EIC, a local development corporation fully organized under the Section 1411 of the Not-for-Profit Corporation Law to act as the agent for the participating municipalities to carry out and handle the administration of the program. And whereas EIC is offering a new product referred to as Pay Red Received Paste, paste which varies from the currently available products in the municipality is not required to remit payments pursuant to paragraph 2C of this municipal agreement unless and until payment is received by the municipality from the owner of the benefited program 
And whereas EIC's position is that the addition of this new product does not require any further amendments to Chapter 178 of the Town Code, as the municipal agreement and addendum will control the terms under which the municipality is required to make payments to the, I e to the EIC, and now therefore be it resolved, the Town Board approves the EIC municipal agreement addendum with with the pay when received PACE product and authorizes the supervisor to execute the agreement addendum and any other documentation as may be required to facilitate the availability of this product in the town of Austin. Do I have a motion? I move. Second. So as discussed at a recent work session attended by Sarah Smiley and Mark Tealking from Energize New York, um, the town board would like to make it possible to offer a new pay when received PACE financing product, which would make it easier for, for municipalities to offer Property owners, including businesses and organizations, looking to take advantage of property assessment energy financing, um, something that would better fit into their needs. The new product also does not require the municipality to remit payments to Energize until payment has been received by the municipality from the owner of the benefited property. Uh, we've been advised by EIC that this new product does not require any further amendments to Chapter 178 of the Town Code as the municipal agreement and addendum will control the terms under which the municipality is required to make payments to the EIC. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, thank you. Um, resolution approving maintenance to Austin Boat and Canoe Club. Resolve that the Town Board of the Town of Austin hereby acknowledges the request made by the Austin Boat and Canoe Club as per the letter sent by OBCC. OBCC Commodore Dr. Michael Pavelcheck, dated October 16, 2018, regarding the installation of planters outside of the OBCC in order to protect the building and prevent washouts of the grounds surrounding the structure, and be it further resolved that the Town of Austin hereby approves this work not to be considered it as a credit against the OBCC's annual in-kind maintenance contribution for 2018. We have a motion. So moved. Second. So we had been approached by the Austin Boat and Canoe Club, um, which is hoping to move planters that are currently on one side of OBCC to the other. Correct? No. Oh, okay. You're going to be more clear about where they're moving from, where they're okay. moving the planters, to help improve the aesthetics as well as the sustainability of these flower containers. That's at least how I understood it. We asked our town engineer, Paul Frioli, to review the request, and we're going to hear more specifically about that from Councilwoman Feldman. And he gave it the thumbs up. As such, we would like to formalize our approval. Boat and Canoe Club has said that the cost would not be considered as a credit against their maintenance contribution for 2018 since there are so many other more expensive projects that they are taking on. Is that part all right? Absolutely. So just describe now what is okay, up to the Okay, so the flowers, there were no planters in the front. The flowers. flowers are planted in a garden bed in front. Oh, okay. And as the sand comes up, the plants hold on to it, just like trees do on dirt. So it's retaining the sand in front of the building and causing it to build up. So we're going to move the flowers from the front into a box a feet away so the sand has an opportunity to wash out or we would be able to clear it out should it get too much. Got it. So they're still going to be in front. They're just going to be two feet away. They're not going to be in the dirt in front. They're going to be in a box at the front okay. two feet further forward. Got it. Sounds Any good. issues? Everybody good with that? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Fantastic. Sorry. Correspondence to be received and filed. There is none. Uh, monthly reports, we had none. Um, we're up to visitor recognition. Is there anybody here who would like to address the town board on anything at all? Hearing nah, nobody, and we're very grateful to have our visitors stay here for as long as they have. Um, we uh, would now like to take a motion to adjourn into executive session for advice of council and uh, personnel discussion. I have a motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Have a wonderful week. We are really hoping that that nor'easter is going to go west, east, just not go anywhere near Austin. And we're going to have some really spectacular events this weekend. We hope you'll all sign up and get your tickets for the Haunted Hayride as soon as possible if you haven't already done so. Um, and we will make sure to communicate with any ticket holder. We'll get a direct email from the Haunted Hayride folks um, if we do need to reschedule their particular time. Um, otherwise, check the town website for more up-to-date information about the weather and the hayride. And thanks, and have a great night, everybody. See you next
out next week. See you on November 7th, Wednesday, November 7th, as we mentioned, not next week and not the following Tuesday, but Wednesday. And we will be, um, we will be at 16 Croton Avenue. Good night.